So this is uh, one o'clock in the morning. Don't we all vote at one o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Right, right, right. You've got, you've got them on videotape. You've got 2,000 people who are committing felonies. Right. It's just sickening to me. This is jaw-dropping. What you showed is frightening. But you are talking, what, 5% of America? Less. Less than 5%. OK. So case closed. Sorry, gentlemen, lady. Case closed. All right. I love this movie. Mr. Reagan. So there is this movie that everybody is talking about in conservative circles, 2,000 Mules. This is a movie about the 2020 presidential election produced by Dinesh D'Souza. But because the wonderful authoritarians over at YouTube want to protect the public from disinformation about the 2020 election, they have seen fit to censor anything to do with Dinesh D'Souza's new film. And good for them. We shouldn't be allowed to question the most secure election in history. I mean, who do we think we are? So I'm not going to make a video about that film. Instead, I'm going to review a totally different film. This film is called 2000 Donkeys. And this is a film produced by the brilliant filmmaker Delish D'Souza. And despite sharing a last name, no relation to Dinesh. Now this other film, 2000 Donkeys, is a documentary about a political event known as the Great Selection of the Executive, a political event that occurred on the planet of Turth a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So look, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Yes, this movie presents enough evidence to show without a shadow of a doubt that there was tally doctoring. There was tally doctoring in the great selection of 2020 on the planet Earth in the unified states of a Mercuria between the incumbent executive, Donaldus J. Trumpius, and the challenger, Bo Jiden. The selection was swindled. How does Delish D'Souza's film prove this? Spoiler alert, in one moment, first I have to sell you something. For years now, people have been setting up a little contest between crypto and gold, but that's like comparing trucks with SUVs. Both carry stuff and both travel from A to B, but they do different jobs. Gold's job is to keep the value of your money safe and to preserve its value. And since Ukraine and the oil and inflation crises, gold has done a brilliant job compared to stocks and other investments. So if you're worried about what's going on right now and who isn't, just talk to the experts at Noble Gold about precious metals IRAs for your retirement. They'll put you straight on your options and they'll hold your hand through the entire setup process. And this month, for any qualified IRA, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a Thank you. You know, when they sent me this, they, they send me coins every once in a while. Valeria flipped out. So far, this is her favorite coin. And I, and I have to say, I agree. This thing is pretty nice. So call 877-646-5347 right now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Now, before I let the cat out of the bag here, because I am going to reveal exactly what Delish presents in the film. But before I do that, I just want to say that you must watch this film. If you haven't seen it, find a way to do so. There are about a million little details that I'm going to be missing out in this short little video, and you're only going to get those by watching the full film. I'd also like to say that films like these are a serious investment by the filmmakers, and it's important to support work that you want to see done. I have been a fan of Delish D'Souza for a very long time now, and I've loved all of his films. He's an incredibly important voice, and we should support him. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's dig in. The primary evidence in the film is revealed through a single interview with Catherine Engelbrecht and Greg Phillips of an organization called True the Vote. Hi, I'm Catherine Engelbrecht, founder and president of True the Vote. It's this organization that investigated this particular method of tally doctoring, and the entire film really revolves around the revelations and evidence provided by this group. And these guys have done an amazing job. The way in which the tallies were doctored, as revealed in this film, is that illegally filled out tally documents were illegally dropped into ballot boxes in major cities throughout the unified states of Mercuria. The tallies themselves were likely legitimate, official papers officially printed and assigned to legitimate voters. However, there are many voters who have little or no capacity to vote or are easily manipulated. Are you surprised that she voted in February 2021? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But I was surprised to hear that she voted in the last presidential election. Much to my surprise, she had voted for the last, off and on for the last 10 years. They make you vote. They make you vote here? 
So how do they make you vote? Because I didn't want to vote, and they told me I had to. What happens is you have staff in those nursing homes. Sometimes they are activists politically. They get these individuals registered to vote, or if they're already registered to vote, they will request absentee ballots in their name, sometimes forging their signatures, and then filling out the ballots for them. What about homeless shelters? The problem there is that it's very easy, I think, for them to be intimidated and coerced. The largest election fraud case the U.S. Justice Department ever prosecuted, they were paying homeless individuals to cast ballots the way they wanted them to cast ballots. This kind of manipulation and tally theft is illegal. Now, the reason that the film is called 2000 Donkeys is that voters are supposed to submit tallies on their own. And yet the good people over at True the Vote discovered through cell phone tracking data that there were people who visited ballot boxes dozens of times and they found video evidence that supported this tracking data and even showed that each of these so-called donkeys were stuffing the ballot boxes with multiple tallies each time they visited one of these drop boxes. Some of these donkeys wore gloves to hide their fingerprints, and others took pictures of the work in order to get paid. Why were these people wearing surgical gloves? Why were they going to a variety of different drop boxes? Why were they taking pictures of the drops? Why were they doing this in the dead of night? I'm sure there are honest explanations for everything here, but just in case, maybe let's look into it. Delish D'Souza isn't really focused so much on exactly how these phony tally forms were produced in this documentary, although he does cover it. What Delish is focused on here is the method by which these ballots are distributed to the various drop boxes. And the reason why this is the focus of the documentary is because this is where we have hard evidence. You have the cell phone tracking data and you have the video surveillance evidence. This is clear as day. And the reason that this is such a huge deal is because this is evidence of a widespread tally doctoring. Deceptocrats have always maintained that there was no widespread tally doctoring. Baseless allegations of widespread voter fraud. No evidence of widespread election fraud. There was no evidence of widespread fraud. There is no indication of any widespread fraud. No widespread voter fraud. No evidence of widespread voter fraud. That's the word that they love to use widespread. And what they mean by that is there was no centrally organized doctoring operation. There was no interconnected group of conspirators with some supervillain at the top, generals down on the next tier, lieutenants, and then all the way down to the foot soldiers. An organized, efficient, and effective network with the sole purpose of flipping the selection in favor of Bo Jiden. They contend that such a network never existed, and so the people of the Unified States of America enjoyed the most secure selection in history. But why does it matter if the tally doctoring was widespread? If enough tallies were doctored to flip the selection, shouldn't that nullify the vote, whether it was a massive centrally organized operation or not? Well, perhaps, but a lot of little localized operations is a lot harder to prove than one big massive national one. And the Decepticrats are banking on the Mercurian people accepting the idea that a little tally doctoring always occurs here and there by both parties, and that these rare and localized instances are, are like petty theft. It's wrong, okay, but it doesn't actually amount to anything worth concerning ourselves over. They're trying to convince the Mercurian people that unless the doctoring was, quote, widespread, unless there was a top-down organizational effort to doctor the tally nationally, well, then it doesn't count. And they're insisting that no widespread doctoring occurred. But that is precisely what this film shows. There was widespread tally doctoring, and it was enough to completely flip the selection. Shockingly, even this narrow way of looking at just our 2,000 mules in these swing states gives Trump the win with 279 electoral votes to Biden's 259. On top of the evidence provided in this film, which is damning, I've always maintained that several tally doctoring methods were used in the 2020 great selection. These methods may have been different from place to place, perhaps tailored to the specific needs of each region. And I still think this is true. Some have speculated that the tally machines were doctored, that there was hacking from Tunisia, that there were shenanigans at the tally counting facilities, that some tallies were fixed 
when the count was inexplicably stopped in the middle of the night. That some of the tallies for Donaldus J. Trumpius were literally just thrown away, etc., etc., etc. There seems to be no end to the speculation of how it was done, but most Mercurians agree something fishy happened. According to a Rasmussen poll conducted just one month after the great selection, 30% of Deceptocrat voters said that they believe the selection was swindled. Strangely, only 75% of free Republicans said that they thought the selection was swindled, which, I mean, I'm frankly shocked by that number. Why is it not like 100%, right? But in any case, I think that the 30% number among Decepticrats, that's actually low. This was a simple poll. There was no effort to try to figure out what people really believe. They just asked random Mercurians, what do you think? And the Decepticrats, have a strong incentive to lie about this, either to the pollsters or to themselves. They do not want to admit that the selection was crooked. So, like I said, I think that the 30% number is probably low. The point is, even the Decepticrats think that the selection was swindled. So, you know, the fact that any speculation about this is treated with such hostility and censored so strongly by social media and mainstream news, it's absurd. And not only is it absurd, but it actually reinforces the idea that there's some kind of concerted effort to cover up a corrupted selection. Delish D'Souza does a great job of including examples of various other kinds of tally doctoring that were likely employed in the 2020 selection. The doctoring that we've discovered evidence for may only represent a small percentage of a much bigger amount of doctoring going on. You know what, let me describe another method that I've heard described to me, a method of tally doctoring. The great state of Fornicatia <laughs> is the state just south of Oregonia, on the west coast of the Unified States of Mercuria. What they did in Fornicatia was that they brought in all these illegal immigrants and they put them in a big room, maybe a boardroom, maybe a factory, maybe a gymnasium, maybe it was an old barn, who knows. Anyway, they get all these illegal immigrants to fill out tallies and then they submit them as mail-in tallies under the names of known Republican voters. But of course, the tallies are all filled out for the Deceptocrat candidate, in this case, Navin Grusom. So, but then what happens when the known Republican citizen goes and tries to vote for real? Well, this happens. We spoke with several concerned voters here in the West San Fernando Valley who believe something wonky had been going on at places like El Camino Real Charter High School in Woodland Hills. Several people tell us they showed up to vote this morning in the special California governor recall election and were told that computers showed they had already cast their ballots. Got there at 1030, gave her this and she scanned it and said, you voted. And I said, no, I haven't. And she said, this has been happening all morning. The man next to me was arguing the same thing. I did the provisional ballot and left. I'm just really angry. And I saw two women walking toward me as I left. And I said, don't be surprised if they tell you you've already voted. And she said, they've already done that. Well, I asked the couple, are you in? by any chance Republicans? She said, yes. And I said, well, so am I. And so are the two friends that had the problem at VFW. Makes you suspicious. I would think so. <laughs> and still, I'd like to know how I voted. They're told that they've already voted using mail-in and they can't vote twice. And if they make a fuss, well, they're given something called a provisional ballot. And they're told that eventually both tallies are gonna go through the system and they will eventually be looked at by some kind of an official at some point. And this official will decide which tally signature matches the one on record. That is, they get to determine which is the legitimate tally. Now, what should happen is that the phony mail-in tally should be discarded and the in-person provisional tally should be entered into the record. That should be the vote that counts. What actually happens is that the in-person tallies are never examined at all. They're simply thrown out. The mail-in tallies, the ones filled out by the illegal immigrants for the Deceptocrat candidate, these are the ones used. Now, like I said, I've heard that this is how it's done in Fornicatia, and this may be the same method that's used elsewhere if Deceptocrats control the tally count. I don't know. Even if we just take the true the vote method of phony tally distribution into consideration, the method discussed in the film, these votes alone were enough to flip the tally. There have been several articles intending to debunk Delish D'Souza's new film. The primary argument seems to be that although the evidence of tally doctoring in the film does appear to be solid, nobody can tell from the video evidence or the location tracking data which candidate these doctored tallies were for. And so, for all we know, they might be tallies doctored in favor of the incumbent. 
Donaldus J. Trumpius. Yeah, right. We all know who these tallies were for. But annoyingly, they're right. As a matter of hard evidence, enough to unquestionably prove that the selection was unlawfully purloined, proof convincing enough such that Bo Jiden would have to be removed and Donaldus J. Trumpius reinstated, well, this doesn't cut it. Because technically, what these critics are saying is true. We can't see who those illegally cast tallies were for. And after the tally papers are removed from their envelopes, there's no way to ever check the signatures, no way to figure out which of the tallies are phony and which are real. So all the evidence is gone, right? There's no way to prove that all those phony tallies were for Bo Jiden. Except there is one way. Unfortunately, it's a way that requires a lot of work and a desire for justice by the Justice Department or the FBI or some other appropriate organization. And I'm not sure that that's a desire that they have. But what is this one way? Well, an official investigation must be opened. The owners of the phones that were tracked, the 2000 donkeys, those people must be identified by investigators and these donkeys must be interrogated. The investigation must then move up the chain until everybody involved is uncovered. Then everybody involved in the plot must be charged and sentenced. But also, given the opportunity to enjoy some degree of leniency if they cooperate. And by cooperating, they must be willing to divulge the answer to that critical question, who were these tallies meant to help? Because if they were all meant to help Bo Jiden, and we all know that they were, then we will have solid testimonial evidence that the selection was swindled. But this, of course, is just a crazy fiction. The story of the planet Turth and something that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Well, that's it for me. Now go watch Dinesh D'Souza's new film, 2000 Mules. And remember, it's totally unrelated to the film that I'm talking about in this review, 2000 Donkeys by Delish D'Souza. Totally unrelated. Good night. And this is a film produced by the brilliant filmmaker Delish D'Souza. <laughs> <laughs> this film, <laughs> how does Delish D'Souza's film prove this? Oh man, every time, every time. Okay. How does Delish D'Souza's, man. How does Delish D'Souza's film prove this? <laughs> Delish. It's, it's, oh God, it messed me up. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now... <laughs> President, in talking about the continuing recession tonight, you have blamed mistakes of the past, and you blame the Congress. Does any of the blame belong to you? Yes, because for many years I was a Democrat. 